You know, before we carry on with this video, I just want to say one thing, and I don't normally do this at the beginning, not many people do, but I want to get it out of the way because I truly do want to say this. Thank you all so much for the support you have given me recently and on the channel. It is absolutely insane. We're still relatively a small channel, right, in the grand scheme of things, and to see the love and support we do get at this stage it is absolutely insane, and I don't know how to put it into words, I really don't. I just truly thank you from the bottom of my heart. The fact you guys use your time, your precious time to watch my videos, I'm eternally grateful for that, I really am. And I guess all I can say is, long may it continue, but enough of the emotional stuff. We're going to get on with today's episode, and I hope you enjoy. So we have a lot to get through today, ladies and gentlemen, and the topics were... They're as controversial as ever, especially the second one. I highly recommend everybody to stay tuned for the second topic, especially the people from the UK, from England, because number one, you need to know what is going on and what will continue to go on as we go further into the future. And number two, it doesn't matter where you're from. I think we're all going to agree. It is absolutely horrifying. I think you can already tell what I'm going to be talking about with the chapters I've included in this video. It's going to be a very interesting time i can tell you that one but let's move on to our first topic jeffrey marsh we all know who he's about we all know what he's known for he likes to make tiktoks telling boys and girls that essentially their genders don't exist and if you don't like your family well guess what jeffrey's got you covered because he'll be your new family if you need a family you can come hang out with me they may not see the real you but that does not mean that you're not real. <laughs> yeah. Now, because this man is getting a lot of attraction, a lot of attention, people outside of the conservative space are now making videos on this man exposing him and his content. We have a TikTok comedian who goes by the name of Shamiron Nessa. I do apologize if I got that name wrong, but she is going viral right now for pretty much saying what we've all been saying, but it's nice to see somebody outside of the conservative space bringing attention to this. She originally made a video response to Jeffrey Marsh in which he said stop calling trans people inspirational in his um, notorious creepy voice. She responded to that video by saying stop telling kids to come over to your Patreon to talk to you privately without their parents knowing. Now obviously that's where the backlash happened because as we all know you're not allowed to question well anything. These days people went after her, they said she was spreading hate, she's lying, she's all the buzzwords because apparently Jeffrey Marsh's content isn't actually for kids, it's for adults who deal with childhood trauma. <laughs> right, okay, let's just use that point for a second, right? So just imagine a kid going onto TikTok and stumbling across a Jeffrey Marsh TikTok because they will and will continue to do so in the future. And he sits there and says, hey kids, uh, I want to talk to you for a second. And goes on to say whatever creepy stuff he says. Do you think a kid's going to sit there and think, yeah, you know what? This is actually for adults who have childhood trauma. I'm just going to scroll past. No. That's all you have to say to dismantle that false reality, that false narrative. Anyway... This woman goes on to make a second response to all the people calling her out and she goes on to expose Jeffrey Marsh that little bit further and I want to give her the stage right now. So I want you to sit back, relax and well, enjoy. Take a listen. Okay guys, this video is going to be a bit long. Stop telling trans people that we're inspirational. Stop telling kids to go on your Patreon and chat to you privately without their parents knowing. And then a lot of people made stitches of me saying I'm transphobic, I've done a lot of bad stuff, um, they've even attacked my scarf, my religion, a lot of bad stuff, which I don't want to go into. And these people have also said they are not talking to the kids. Okay, so I did a little bit of digging. Hi kids. Hey kids. I want to talk to the kids. Hi kids. Hey kids. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of videos of them addressing kids. Now, the main video I want to talk about. Your parents screwed up. It's okay to say so. <laughs> That's why I made a Patreon. So you want to talk to kids whose parents have screwed up. Why? Why do you want to talk to these particular kids? Why? That's why I made a Patreon. So that we could talk about it. So that we could connect in a way that has more privacy. 
so that we could talk to each other in a way that's a, uh, more open and stuff that we wouldn't share like in the comments of a video like this. I think you're worthy. And so you want to talk to kids on a social media platform privately about topics that cannot be talked about in the video of TikTok's comments sections. Because why? Why you want to do that? Why you can't chat about these topics in these comments? Is it because it might get flagged or something? What, what, what could be the reason? Could this be one of the reasons? Going no contact with the kids' parents? Because you say in one of your videos how kids can go no contact with their parents. So you teach kids how to go no contact with their parents? Is that, is that what you're teaching them on, on Patreon? Or is it this? You're teaching this more on... Because this, this video might get flagged. That's why I don't want to say the word. And this is Jeffrey Marsh's Patreon. You talk about this topic with kids. Now here are just some of the signs. Literally one of the first ones. Gaining access and isolating the victim. Asking them privately to go on Patreon. And talking to them privately so you can connect. And then showing these kids that you trust them. You love them. You'll keep their secrets. And to keep them isolated from their parents. And then the icing on the cake is this video. Hi, beautiful. If you do not have a family that loves you, I'm going to be your family. No, you can't. You are a stranger on the internet. You are not their family. Oh, and another thing. You can turn off age restrictions on Patreon. So kids can go to Jeffrey Marsh's their Patreon. So do you know what I really, really want to see right now? Truly, I do. All the people that stuck up for Jeffrey Marsh, I want to see their response to this TikTok because what can they say? There is nothing they can say. Actually, do you know what they're going to say? She's transphobic. She's a turf because that's all they've got left. She showed everybody what kind of TikToks Jeffrey Marsh makes. Nobody's making it up. Nobody's taking things out of context. He literally says, hey kids, your genders don't exist. Your parents screwed up. I'll be your family. Is it because he wants to confuse people? Kids? Separate them from the family? Hey, I don't know, I'm just asking the questions. And the more I think about it, the people that are saying his content isn't for kids, do you think when adults stumble across his TikToks, they're going to be like, well, yeah, he just said, hey, kids, so it's obviously content for me? No, there is no valid argument in this whatsoever. But it is. It is more controversial for her to sit there and say that stuff than it is for Jeffrey Marsh to post his content, right? Because I can guarantee you in the vague TikTok social media guidelines and policies, who is more likely to get banned? Her or Jeffrey Marsh? You have your answer. I don't understand why, of all people, Jeffrey Marsh's content needs to be pushed. Why does that need to be in the algorithm? I'm asking you guys. I don't get why people just don't get the clear message of leave the kids alone. <laughs> anyway, what do I know? Huh? That's a great segue into our next topic, actually, because it just gets worse. Another issue we're seeing arising is the whole controversy with drag queen events, whether it's under the name of drag queen story hour or simply parents taking their kids to drag queen events. I'll say now, right, if you're an adult and you enjoy these sort of events, these performances, Knock your socks off, right? You do you. The concern and the issue is, is with parents taking their kids to these events where a lot of the time they end up being non-PG and we see many more of these events being exposed all over social media and then the drag queen performers, performers themselves because for some reason they are just heavily advocating for either reading a book in front of children or simply performing in front of children which ends up being a provocative performance a lot of the time. Why is there this need to be in front of children? These are grown men playing dress up. What is the fascination with being around children? I don't get it. But we have this story going viral in England because it seems as if this trend has made its way to this country. It's got a visa and it's settling down. A political broadcaster called Dominique Samuels has made a video where she shows insane video proof of these events taking place in England. And if I'm going to be honest, it's some of the worst I have ever seen. When I first saw it, I thought, here we go again, another event in America. But when I learned it was in England, I was truly shocked and deeply concerned. You know, we have this stereotype in England 
England that, oh, whatever goes on in America is crazy and Americans are crazy and they take things to the next level, it would never happen in this country. Well, after you've seen this video and go ahead and watch Dominique Samuel's video, which I highly recommend you do, it's clear to see we have to put that stereotype to bed. This is just not normal. And like, I struggle to believe anybody would advocate for what we just saw in that clip I just showed you. And parents are taking their kids to these events. And we always get told, nah, they're family friendly. All right, okay. And in Dominique Samuel's video, she exposed a singular event organizer who goes by the name of, wait, let me just check because it's a bizarre name, Kaba Baba Rave. Now, before Dominique Samuels raised the concern and made her video, you could actually go check out their pages, their Instagram pages, and see what was on there. That's where she got a load of her research from, right? The stories they put on their Instagram page, etc., etc. But obviously to avoid any backlash, any controversy and responding to the people who may have some valid questions, they have made everything private. They've made their Instagram private and their Facebook page private. Thankfully, a load of people saw what was on there before they did this and they have posted the images on Twitter. I couldn't believe what was on there. There are no words for it. How that account wasn't taken down, beyond me. But this is what happens when you give people an inch. You know what, they don't even take a mile any longer, they proceed to take 300 miles. And do you know what the narrative is right now for parents to be concerned over this stuff? I'm not even joking. If a parent has concerns about the safety of children because of these events, uh, they're now right wing, they are far right. That's the narrative being pushed because you're not allowed to question it, you just have to accept it. Which, you know, is really weird to me, parents get concerned. And do you know what, it's really weird to me, parents who question this sort of stuff and have concerns, get labelled all of these things they don't want to be labelled as. But the parents that take their kids to these shows, what do they get? Oh yeah, seals, mate. They start clapping everywhere. Look, I'm not here to tell parents how to raise their kids, right? Although there is one side of the political spectrum who insists on telling everybody else how to raise their kids. And in some cases, you know, they want to raise them themselves. But it is very weird and uh, strange parents love taking their kids to these events because I can guarantee you if this was a man who wasn't playing dress up uh, he would be arrested if a man proceeded to do what these drag queens are doing and he wasn't identifying as a woman or pretending to be a woman he would be arrested apparently these men dressing up as women gives them this sort of right to perform in front of kids and face no backlash whatsoever very strange times we're living in. As a young person, as you can probably tell, I am not looking forward to the rest of the future. <laughs> but that is the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed today. Leave your comments down below. I'm sure many of you have already. If you have enjoyed today's video, then please for me, make sure to leave a like rating. If you're new, hit that big red subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. But until next time, until the next episode, it has been your boy JD. Please for me, make sure to always, always have a great day and stay safe. I'm out. Peace.